the catalytic converter efficiency below threshold DTCs, the PO420s and the PO430s, are the most common diagnostic trouble code you face in the shop. If you want some tips on how to keep that check engine light off when repairing those codes, stick around and watch today's edition of The Trainer. Today's episode of The Trainer is brought to you by Autel. Learn more about their entire diagnostic tool line at www.autel.com. The P0420 and 0430 DTCs are the most common DTCs in the United States. And the most common repair made to try to solve these problems is replacing the catalytic converter. But all too often, that repair fails to solve the problem and the customer returns with the same issue they had before. When tackling these DTCs, it's important to understand why converters fail. Even if the converter on your customer's vehicle is bad, if you don't correct the reason it went bad, well, that new converter is going to suffer a very short life. A common cause of converter failure is overheating, leading to damage of the converter substrate. Overheating can lead to melting of the substrate. And of course, that's going to affect the ability of gases to flow through the converter and its ability to deal with the exhaust gases themselves. Now, the problem is melting of the substrate, the overheating condition is often caused by a problem with the feed gases being sent to the converter from the engine. These gases have to be maintained in a very narrow lambda range, and that's the job of the ECM. So any drivability condition that causes those gases to go too lean or too rich can result in overheating of the converter. Another common cause is poisoning of the converter. Poisoning is a result of the substrate surfaces being coated by a foreign substance, usually oil or coolant. Now when the surfaces are coated with this foreign substance, active conversion can no longer take place. Physical damage is also a cause of converter failure. Damage to the converter housing, cracks in the exhaust system allowing air into the converter, and broken welds are all examples of physical damage. The second step in a successful repair is understanding how the ECM determines that the converter isn't converting. The ECM monitors the activity of both the upstream and downstream oxygen sensors and determines the switch ratio between the two. The upstream oxygen sensor, whether it's conventional or wideband, is expected to switch continuously from lean to rich while the downstream sensor should remain relatively stable in its output. The more the rear sensor activity mirrors the front, the higher the switch ratio will be. The next step is to see if any conversion is actually taking place. And we can do that with the help of an infrared temperature gun or a thermal imaging camera. Bring the vehicle up to full operating temperature and then use the thermal imager to measure the temperature at the weld ring on the inlet side of the converter. Next, measure the temperature of the weld ring on the outlet side of the converter. The conversion process generates heat. So if the outlet is 20 degrees or more hotter than the inlet, it's a good indication that some conversion is taking place. Now this is a good way to verify a good converter, but don't use this test alone as a means to condemn one. The next step is for us to check the converter's operation. And there are several ways that we can do that. If the vehicle uses conventional oxygen sensors, you can compare the switching activity using the scan tool in graph mode, or for even greater accuracy, the digital storage oscilloscope. If the vehicle uses a wideband sensor as the upstream sensor, look for the data PID that charts its current and not the voltage. The current is what the ECM is looking at when determining the switch rate. Mode 6 is also a good place to look for information. 
review the test results for the catalyst monitor, especially anything that indicates switch rate. Specifically, what we're looking at is the test result compared to the minimum and or maximum test values allowed. Think of those values as goalposts. The closer the test result is to either value, the closer the test is to failing. And don't forget to check for any related technical service bulletins. You'll be surprised at how many vehicles only require a reflash to correct the PO420 or 0430 code. This is especially true if your testing up to this point indicates that the converter seems to be working just fine, yet the code is set in the ECM. Cleaning the converter using a slow drip fuel induction cleaner added through a central vacuum port may bring the converter back to life. When you've completed the adding of the induction cleaner, let the vehicle sit for at least 30 minutes and then take it out for a test drive. It's probably going to smoke like a freight train. Uh, but before you go on that test drive, make sure that you take a look at the mode 6 results for the catalyst monitor so you have a benchmark for, uh, for comparison. Then when you get back from your test drive, look at the Mode 6 data again. If you see it improved, you just might be able to save that converter. Correcting the cause is also critical if the converter has failed as a result of overheating. Signs of overheating include a converter housing that has a bluish bronze discoloration and melted or broken substrate. Melted substrate may be noted using the thermal imager. Any cold spots in the middle of the housing seen when performing the temperature tests may indicate a melted section of substrate. To confirm melted substrate, you'll have to remove the converter and look through it. Melted substrate rarely occurs at either end first. It's usually in the middle. And that's the only way you can confirm that that is indeed the case. Now, if you suspect broken substrate, well, listen for a rattling noise on your test drive or use a rubber mallet and lightly tap on the side of the converter housing to see if you can hear that piece of substrate rattling around. The presence of misfires and or system lean, system rich conditions are often the root cause of overheating and damage to the converter. If you don't correct these conditions prior to replacing the converter, well, as I said earlier, that new converter doesn't stand much of a chance. So even if that new converter seems to have turned the light off and kept it off, keep in mind that converters rarely fail as a result of old age. There's usually a reason for the failure. So make sure you inspect these areas and correct as needed to avoid a comeback and a dissatisfied customer. Hey, and don't forget, show some love to the people who make these series possible, and that's the folks at Autel. Check out their entire line of diagnostic equipment at www.autel.com. And as always, thanks for watching.